Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for a fun unboxing episode. I've got at least three guitars and a small package we can talk about, but this is actually a guitar I got with the help of a viewer of the show. His name is Steve. He sent me a link to this one and said, hey, check this thing out. I've never seen it before. To which I said, yeah, that's a fantastic model. You can learn all about it in this episode. And thank you for sending it to me because I've been looking for another one of these ever since I sold my last one. And that was a good couple of years ago. You just don't find this particular model for sale almost ever. So this one was for sale at a shop called Elderly's. They're up in Michigan. I've always liked their website. One day I hope mine can be kind of like theirs. But inside here is a very strange Gibson model. We haven't talked about it in a while. Unfortunately, we're missing our combo lock because somebody got locked out at some point. But this one was just put in on their shop on consignment. And let me tell you, this was a steal and a half. Look at this. It's another Gibson M3 Deluxe, my friends. Yeah, if you've never seen a Gibson M3 before, you can check out the full review and demo to learn everything, but it was the best Gibson Super Strat ever created. If I remember correctly, there's 10 different models. Here's an excerpt from this video. You have the M3 Standard, the M3 Deluxe, the M3H Standard, the M3H Deluxe, M4 Standard, M4S Deluxe, M3 Stealth, the M3 All-American, and finally the M3 Reissue. So yeah, out of all those models, this one is my favorite because it uses so many sandwich layers of wood. It kind of reminds me of like a The Les Paul or something. But you get a little bit of maple, you get some dyed poplar, you get the beautiful walnut, which kind of reminds me of like a The Paul or a VSG, something like that. And it's just so beautifully put together, top, back, and sides. I mean, you can say, hey, that's a whole bunch of layers of wood put together at the same time. But I just think it's beautiful for a super strat style guitar. Now, unfortunately, this one's kind of lame as compared to my last one. I mean, sure, we've got some flame figuring back here, but the first one I had owned, it had the ultra flame neck. This one's just, you know, hardly even there. It even had the flamed maple fretboard, which can't really say this one has anything like that. But what this one has over that other one is the fact that it's actually in really clean condition. Like we've got a couple of impressions and scratches on the top. We've got some sort of like scuffing to the finish right here. And at first I thought this was damage, but no, it's not. It's just different coloration in the wood. I mean, do you guys see that? It's actually multi-pieced maple body within here on top of all the other layers. I mean, it's such a, a plywood guitar technically, but they're so cool. They're very comfortable. I've always liked the reverse Explorer head stock on them. I mean, they feel so cool to play and they're just effortless. You can get to all these frets. I mean, they are the epitome of the Gibson Super Strat in my opinion. They didn't really sell too well simply because they were too late to the party. We've got our Gibson branded, I think it's a Schaller Floyd Rose style if I remember correctly. And sweet, it looks like we actually have the original bar on here. But nice, original Case Candy M3 Deluxe. Tells us everything we need to know. Yeah, this thing is just display case ready. Just gotta make that case, post it all up and it'll look good. And I can play Combo Lock Breaker later and put that back on. So I'm actually gonna hold this one back until I find one that I like better because these, they're just so hard to find. I mean, as I said, the last one I sold almost four years ago was the last one for sale on the market. And I think a complete collection of all the M3 variations would be great. So when you find a good deal, you should keep it and consider yourself lucky. So yeah, thank you, Steve, for letting me know about this one. The guitars that are best to like send me links to are when they're not for sale on Reverb. They're just at a shop that doesn't advertise regularly. Because sometimes you can find some cool guitars before they end up listing them. So very happy with this purchase. Next up here is k kind of an interesting story. So back in February, I was reached out by kind of a unlikely sponsor, to be honest. It's a well-known Chinese website that you can buy knockoff chipsons from, but they also have like, you know, real guitars and stuff. So when they're wanting to sponsor my show, it's like, 
Okay, I mean, there's a couple of cool guitars we could check out from you. But they wanted the promotion to happen in March, but it's like February, and it's like, I would love to do that, but all the things that I'm interested, they're saying it's going to take like two, three plus months to get here. And they're like, okay, fine, that, that'll be good. So this arrived to me about a month and a half ago. So I sent an email to them asking, do you still want to do the sponsorship? I know you were really looking to do it within this promotional period. And they've just completely ghosted me. So it's like, I guess we're not doing the sponsorship anymore and I got a free guitar. Okay, looks like we get a cable. And we've got some sort of a, a Les Paul shape, but trust me guys, I wasn't just gonna order a chips and be like, yeah, this is a sponsorship. It would have to be something kind of weird and exotic. And it didn't advertise as saying Gibson on the headstock, so I hope it doesn't, but I guess we're just gonna have to see. Ah, great, it, it does. <laughs> yeah, Chipson tried to sponsor me, <laughs> but I thought, hey, cool, I could actually get a Dragon Les Paul here. And you know what this actually reminds me of? The Trampus Green PRS guitar that we did at one point in time. I've got to say, this is actually way cooler than I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it was going to come off as gaudy. Like, we just actually talked about the real Gibson Dragon that was done way before I had even ordered this thing. But man, yeah, I would like to see a real version of this from Gibson. Of course, it'd be like $50,000 plus, but <laughs> I guess until then, th these are out there. I don't necessarily condone buying them. I did not know it was going to say Gibson on the headstock. So I guess we can use this as an opportunity to say what makes a Gibson a fake. Lack of fret nibs straight from the factory. Now, that's not always true because around 2014, Gibson decided not to do that for a couple of years. The truss rod cover is a good one to look at. These areas should not be level with each other. Here you can see a real one. You can see how this one looks very flat at the bottom. Now to the untrained eye, this headstock actually looks pretty good, but the logo is definitely not quite right, and this is Perloid material, whereas a real Les Paul Custom would be Mother of Pearl. However, you also have the Gibson USAs, like the classic customs and stuff that do use the acrylic, so that gets a little bit hairy. Metric style bridge with the slotted screws. Now that's another one that has an asterisk because occasionally you can get Tone Pros parts that also have that so it could be an aftermarket. Another thing is if you actually look at your pickup rings, they're just like way too bold. Here's a picture of a real one at the same angle over here. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. I mean, this is like Epiphone style. Now, if you read the serial number, it comes out as 2006, 171st day of the year, initial batch, 646th in production. I mean, this actually does exist to a real guitar, but that's why, especially if you're shopping for like 2005, 2006 Gibsons, you gotta be careful because that's the number that they tend to use. But this is actually impressed in the guitar. It shouldn't be a different color if it's a real one. Now, sometimes you get some like bleeding other dyes and whatnot, but it shouldn't it look like this. Now obviously there's other things like this is not perfectly symmetrical. It doesn't fit all that good. And usually the layout of the knobs are quite wrong. I got some other things that make this kind of an obvious fake is, I mean, that, that that's not real abalone inlay. I mean, when you look at something that's real and then compared to this, you can kind of tell the difference. There's almost like a 3D effect going on here where I think what they've done is they just have paper that kind of looks like this, like maybe a foil paper, and then they put like a clear acrylic over top of it just to kind of give it the illusion that it's real abalone shell. But I've got to say, this thing's actually pretty cool. I just wish it didn't have this on the headstock because I, I was all ready to say, hey, this is kind of a cool single cut type thing. But yeah, now I can't really condone it. But it does at least appear to be a real wooden veneer on top. And it's got a big chunky neck to it. Now, I think we have a couple of high frets, but it's not like that last glary we just did where they don't actually ring out. All right, let's move on to the next one, which I think will do the small one. So I told you guys that M3 came from Elderlies, right? To my surprise, after I ordered, I didn't know they had a rewards program. They're like, hey, you earned so many points. I can actually get something with that. So that was a nice surprise to get some bonuses here. So I got the Diodario lithium batteries to use on these Snark tuners, but I actually found out Snark has a rechargeable one now. So I wanted to try that, and then I also wanted one that I didn't have to worry about being dead and I can just use it regularly. Because I really like Snark tuners, I think they work well. I've been using the PRS rechargeable one ever since it came out. They had sent this to me when that new Silver Sky color came out. And I've liked using this the past year or so. I just found it's not quite as nice feeling as the Snark ones in my opinion. 
But now we've got one more guitar today. So, I forgot to write down on the box what is actually in this one. <laughs> so, I guess we gotta pop it open before I can figure that out. All right, I remember everything now. So, whenever you see a guitar show up on Reverb, if they're a big name shop, sometimes if you just go to the shop's website, it's a little bit cheaper. Like they take Reverb's 5% out or sometimes it's even a greater incentive to do it. I used to feel bad about sidestepping Reverb back when they were 3.5% and you know, they're like musicians all coming together feeling good. But after the 5% thing, it's like, if it makes a deal happen, I mean, it's up to you. You do lose some buyer protections, but generally well-known shops, you don't necessarily need the protection if you're buying with a credit card anyway. And it's up to you as the consumer I mean, they're listed in two different places. It's not like you're asking them on Reverb, hey, what's your direct contact information and stuff like that. So it's a little bit different. But I saw this. It's like, oh, it's my broken Joan Jet. It actually came back from Sweetwater. Here it is. Lil Wayne smashed it up. And Sweetwater has made it look absolutely perfect again. Just kidding, this is a different one. <laughs> I saw it and it's like, hey, it's got the sticker on the pick guard yet. Yes, I need to own that one. I had the Blackhearts model at one point in time that was like this. Kind of regret selling that one now because this is another one I'm going to keep back in my personal collection because I just like these things, mainly because I like the 65 Melody Makers and the fact that this has a little bit of Joan Jett associated with it. It's a very iconic guitar of hers, despite not being a 100% replica, but it's got some cool vibes to it. But the thing with these is they were distressed from the factory and it's a Gibson USA product, so that's kind of cool. Now I can tell this neck has actually been played a little bit because it's been all glossed over, so it's not true new old stock condition. So maybe not the absolute most perfect melody maker of Jones out there, but I mean, it's in decent shape. For me, it's all about, you know, the displayability of it. I mean, it looks new old stock and, you know, stupid things like little stickers on here, they make me excited as a Gibson collector. So until I find a better one, I think I'll just hold on to that. I don't necessarily expect this model to go up crazily in value anytime soon because let's face it, you know, good 10, 15 years has already passed and they haven't done too much. But that is going to do it for today. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we're going to catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.